Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about GitHub and specifically credentials in GitHub. Um, talk about the three different types and kind of their pluses and minuses and uh, my recommendations for them. Anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so with GitHub, uh, sometimes you need to do priv uh, privileged things inside GitHub Actions. For instance, like cloning private repositories, making issue comments, uh, you know, triggering package uploads, I don't know, all sorts of stuff you may need special credentials for. And today we're specifically talking about credentials that interact with GitHub, uh, things like GitHub packages or cloning or, or those sorts of things. Uh, now there's kind of three different types of credentials that you can use inside GitHub Actions. Uh, the first and the oldest, the one that's been around the longest time, is personal access tokens. Uh, personal access token basically represents your user, your, your user account, uh, you can scope the privileges on them. So if we go to, I never remember the pages, so <laughs> I always go to one of my repos and then do settings tab and then click this. Um, and this is how you can set up personal access tokens. I guess it's settings slash token slash new. Uh, so you can probably poke around the settings menu. Uh, but basically with personal access tokens, and if you're gonna use them in like CI, you're probably gonna set them to no expiration, which yeah, GitHub gives you a nice little warning as it should. You can scope down their permissions, but they're still extremely broad. Uh, for instance, if you select the repo, this gives the token access to all of the repos that you have access to, all private and public repos. Now you can do it to just public repos, and it still has access to all of the public repos that you have access to. You can't really scope it down to a single repository or a single organization or anything like that. It basically acts as your user. Um, you can, of course, give it some of the other privileges as well, and you could scope these uh, you can't scope these, but you can select just the privileges you need, which is nice. It's not a full admin token all the time. Um, but yeah, it, it's basically your full account. And uh, you know the, the setting you'll probably use is no expiration because there isn't really a good way to like automatically rotate them. So that's kind of the oldest way to do this. And it worked fine for uh, things that were needed before. Like you know, I used this when in Travis CI to do special things with GitHub. Uh, and so like, you know, it, it kind of makes sense. The next that's come along is specific to GitHub Actions, and it is the automatic token that's provided to GitHub Actions jobs. And that's available as secrets.github underscore token. And this token has some default privileges. Usually you probably want to adjust these privileges because it's overly broad. Uh, <laughs> the ability to adjust the permissions is actually relatively new, so I'll we'll scroll down and read about that. Uh, but basically, if you need a token, you can often substitute secrets.github token and this will give you a short-lived token that is specific to the repository you're working on so already comparing with the uh, personal access token it's not your full account it's just a single repository and it has an expiration so it, i believe it expires in an hour by default it might even get cleaned up at the end of the job i don't even I don't remember it probably says in here somewhere <laughs> you can read the docs i'm not going to read them for you um, but the cool thing about this is you can scope down the permissions for this. These are the default permissions, and it has two different sets of default permissions. So if it's used in a uh, in a branch or a pull request from the repository it's targeting, like y you are working on your own repo, or it's the primary branch run, it'll have this permissive uh, access. So this will give it you know, some pretty powerful uh, permissions, but it, again, it's only scoped to that one repository. You can see all these read writes and nuns and reads, et cetera, et cetera, here. Uh, and if it's in a fork, uh, say it's like a pull request from an outside repository, it'll have this restricted access instead. So you can see generally just has contents read, metadata is always read, uh, and everything else is none. It doesn't have any other permissions. Now you can actually grant some slight more permissions to uh, pull requests. You can upgrade them to read for all of these categories. Uh, it doesn't give you write permission in any of these, but it's really nice to be able to set these up. And you can do this by setting permissions. Do they have any examples here? Oh, they don't. Uh, I think I can get one from work. I think I did this for packages in here, actually. Mitch. Permissions. Permissions. Oop. Oop. <laughs> Anything there is here. Oh, it's in a pull request. It's not sh shipped yet. Okay, here's here's an example. 
Um, you can set permissions so that you can give it slightly more or slightly less. And I recommend setting this always if you're going to use GitHub token, just because it, uh, it, it helps you not accidentally give away these more powerful uh, permissions and it's a little bit more explicit about what you're doing. So you can set this on the job level. So here I'm doing it on a specific job. You can also set it globally in the file as well. So this is kind of the, the next bit that's sort of nice. Now, one restriction to this is, as I stated before, it's limited to the current repository that you're working on, which means if you need to clone, say, another repository that has dev scripts in it, you're not going to be able to use this. And normally you would fall back on personal access tokens, but then you have all the same problems that I talked about before. Uh, so there is actually a third approach to this, a third type of credential that you can get. And it's actually very similar to this automatic access token. And actually, I'm pretty sure the way this automatic access token is implemented is using this third option, but GitHub has a, a special version of this. And the third option here is application tokens. And there's a bunch of GitHub actions that do this. Uh, I, I wanted to write my own just to see how they work and understand JWTs and play a little bit more with you know, JavaScript without dependencies and learn about modules and I don't know. I, I wrote this from scratch. I probably shouldn't have. I probably should have reused someone else. Uh, but they all, they're all basically the same idea. So you can check out someone else's as well. But what you can do is you can set up a GitHub application. And a GitHub application can be scoped to just your user or just your organization. It can also be scoped to a subset of your repositories. And it can have scoped uh, privileges and you can change the privileges when you access the token. So it gives you basically all the flexibility that you would get from this uh, automatic GitHub token with this permission section, but you can expand it out a little bit further to cover a few more repositories. Uh, and you can you know, scope it to whatever you want. And so I find that application tokens are a little bit more flexible than your, you know, your GitHub secret here. Uh, and they give you way, <laughs> they give me way more options on how you can actually set stuff up. So I actually set this up myself to get rid of a personal access token uh, to clone a set of scripts that's used to deploy pre-commit CI. I want to walk you through quickly setting up an application and how you might go about using this. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to go to either your organization or your account, because you can set up applications for your personal account versus an organization. I'm going to set it up for pre-commit CI just because I've already done this once. And to do that, you'll go to settings, you'll scroll down to developer settings, you'll go to GitHub apps. Now there is actually the pre-commit CI app, and this is the internal one that I set up for doing developer tools cloning. Uh, we're gonna actually gonna click new GitHub app here. And we're gonna name it something, uh, explains GitHub app, doesn't really matter. Uh, we're gonna make an internal app so it's not actually exposed to anyone else. We can skip this, I'm just putting example.com, it's required for whatever reason. We're not going to be using any callbacks. You can set up webhooks for your app. You know, apps are fully featured and can do all sorts of other stuff. Uh, we're not going to bother clicking any of that. Uh, we don't have any installation, so we're not going to click this. We don't have a webhook, so we're going to skip that. And now we can select what sort of permissions we're going to ask for. Now, in my situation, all I needed was contents. I just needed to be able to read them. And I didn't need any of these other permissions. Now, note there's way more here than there were for the uh, GitHub, is it GitHub secret, GitHub token, GitHub token. Yeah, there's way more options here. So if you need more of these, you can set up way more permissions as, as you see fit. I only need contents here, so that's all I'm going to select. And we don't have any webhooks, so we're not gonna set any of those up. Oh, you can also set up organization features too. Ooh, we don't even need that. User permissions, we don't have any user auth flow, so we're not gonna set any of those. Uh, and we can restrict our uh, app down here. So I'm gonna say only this account, and we're gonna create it. That's kind of the first step. This is going to give you a client ID. This is one way that the app identifies itself. It actually needs a client ID, an app ID, and a uh, private key, which we'll see in a bit, to sign requests and act, get those temporary access tokens. And in order to do that, we need to generate a client secret. Where was it? Or generate a private key. Yeah, so we're going to click this button. It's going to download a uh, private key for you. And you'll use that when you're uh, working with your, your app. Now, this app actually requires you to set up two different secrets. The first is the app ID. That is this little number up here. And the second is this private key, the one we just downloaded. So I'm just going to open it. Yeah, I know. Oh, I leaked a private key. Oh, no. Um, 
and it actually wants you to base64 this. So you'll basically take this, you'll set two secrets inside GitHub Actions, your app ID and your private key that's base64 encoded, and this action will allow you to get a temporary token. Uh, and that temporary token will expire at the end of the job or within 60 minutes if the job crashes and like it doesn't have a ability to clean up, which I'm pretty sure it always cleans up, so it's not a big deal. And all the other actions that work the same way, there's this get, there's a bunch of get app token, get app actions, they all work basically the same way. Uh, and so you could use one of those other ones if you didn't want to use the one that I wrote, which I don't blame you. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's kind of the third way. So there's there's personal access tokens, which are broad. They're basically your user and they're hard to scope down to an individual repository and they don't expire. So that's kind of the negatives there. There's the automatic GitHub token, which is convenient. You don't have to do anything to provision it. Uh, it is scoped to a single repository, so you can kind of control the blast radius there. And you can scope it down to the permissions that you care about within that. Uh, but you can't upgrade those permissions to something more than you would need. And you can't access other repositories. And then there's the app token, which requires a little bit of setup. You have to set up a GitHub app and you need to get this private key, blah, 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 all that stuff. Um, but it gives you all the flexibility of you know, being able to select as many repositories as you want and whatever permissions that you may need. So it's a little bit more flexible. So those are the kind of the three different ways that you can get a GitHub token and how you can use it in GitHub Actions. Hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.